All right, everyone. Well, the summer movie series of tutorials continues this week with the new movie, Land of the Lost. Now, I thought we'd do something very cool in kind of in the spirit of Land of the Lost by doing a text effect that uh, we're going to create a stone look. Have some uh, letters look like it's really just cut out of stone and it's got really aged look to it and cracks and everything like that. So, I've gone ahead and created the text for this effect, as you can see right here, and I've obviously, for copyright reasons, changed it ever so slightly. Now, if you want to follow along this tutorial, I've actually made this file available as a download. Right here on this video page, you can go to the link, download this very file, and you can follow along, or you can go ahead and create your own text. It's really up to you. But we're going to start by first go ahead and locking the transparency of this layer. You can notice that the text is on its own layer against a black background. So I'm going to go and lock the transparency, set my foreground and background colors to their default black and white. And if they're not already, simply press the D key on your keyboard. Go under Filter, go to Render, and choose Clouds. And if you don't like the distribution, you can always press Command or Control F to redistribute the clouds. And I think they like it. So now, what I want to do is, before I do anything else, is go ahead and add the cracks and other kind of aging to this. So let's grab the Lasso tool here in the toolbar. And I'm going to first start up here at this top corner of the B. I'm just going to take this and just drag and select that corner. And I'm just going to grab my Move tool and just give us a little bit of a nudge and a little, give, give it a little bit of a nudge down and maybe do a little bit of a free transform and rotate it. Just simply press Command T to do that. So it looks like we've got a piece that's falling off there. So let's do that to another couple areas. I'm going to take that same lasso tool and just draw over this area of the T. But I'm basically going to retrace back over my line here, not being precise. And it gives me a little random selection. If I hit Delete, it will show me that little cracked area there. So let's do that in a few more areas. Let's do it right here. Just tracing back over. So you're drawing a selection and just basically tracing back over it. Let's don't do too many. Let's do one more right here. And there we have that. So I want to add a few more cracks, but this time I'm just going to brush them in. So let's grab our brush tool, get a very, very small pixel brush. About a five pixel brush will be good. Go over here and open up your options or your brush options by simply clicking, clicking that icon here. And then going into uh, Shape Dynamics. Now right here, we're going to take the Size Jitter setting and push it all the way to 100%. Now here in the Control setting, I am going to go ahead and leave this to Pen Pressure because I am using a tablet. It's not necessary. If you're not using a tablet, you can leave it alone. Jump over here to Brush Tip Shape, and let's just push the spacing out a little bit to make that line a little bit more random. Now let's go in here and just continue to paint more cracks in. We're not deleting any areas. Now we're just painting on to the letters itself. Let's add some lines down here at the bottom. Maybe have a few cracks coming down here. Just to kind of give it a separation from the letters and the surface that it's sitting on. And a few cracks will make it seem as though it's, you know, these letters just kind of landed here and cracked the, uh, the floor or whatever like that. Just like that. I think that looks good. Let's add a few more cracks here. Let's come into these little areas of the images. So we're just painting on those lines right on there. Just give us, give us that aged kind of uh, old stone look there. That looks pretty good. Well, now what I want to do is we're going to go into the filter menu. We're going to go to Render and choose Lighting Effects. Now inside this window, only thing we're going to need to pay attention to is down here at the very bottom here where it says Texture Channel. Now inside here, we're going to go in and it normally would be set to None. But I want you to go in here and this time just choose the red channel. Just like that. And what it's doing is re referencing the channels that make up this image, which is, in this case, just that gray layer. And what it's going to do is, because it's reacting to the lighting effect here, it's going to make the texture a little bit more rough. And you can determine how rough by this slider here. You can make it more flat or more mountainous. In this case, I want to make it more mountainous, and we'll keep that setting at around 85. And we'll go ahead and leave white as high checked on. Now, the only other thing is that you can change the direction of the lighting by grabbing these little handles on the side of the circle here and determining where you want the lighting to be coming from. In this case, I want it to come from the top right. So I've got all that applied. Let's go ahead and click OK. And you can see it enhances that texture even more. Well, let's enhance it even more so by going into the filter menu again, and this time going to Noise and choose Add Noise. And we're going to keep it a relatively small amount. Let's set the amount to about 30%. And I'm going to leave the distribution setting to no uh, Uniform. And we'll leave Monochromatic checked on. And we'll click OK. Now you'll notice what's going on here. Notice those cracks we added and the little places we deleted. They're showing a little bit of depth because of that lighting effects we applied on there. Because we added those cracks before we did the lighting effects, it picks up those areas and gives it a little bit more depth. 
Very, very cool. Let's add this a uh, little bit more to this. I'm going to go ahead and double click on that layer and open up the layer style panel for this layer. And we're going to add a simple bevel and emboss. We're going to change it a little bit. You can see by just adding the default bevel and emboss, the difference it's made already. It's defining it a little bit more. But let's make it a little bit better. I'm going to go in here and change the technique from smooth to chisel soft. And we're going to take the depth and push it all the way up to 1,000. Here down in the size, we're going to take that and set it to 2. And then down here in the shading area, we're going to uncheck Use Global Light. And then we're going to take this uh, little node that controls the light and put it in pretty much the same position we did when we were in the Lighting Effects window. And that's in the upper right area here. Now, one other thing. Before we hit OK on this, we're going to add a color overlay. Go over here. Now, that have obviously got that hideous red by default. But let's go in here and click on that color swatch and change this to a more of a yellowish color. And again, it's a layer style. You can always go back in there and change the color whenever you want. And to make sure it blends uh, properly with that, I'm going to change the blend mode of this from normal to soft light. And there you can see it's given me look, looks like a kind of a stony effect. You know, again, we can go in there and change the color, make it more of a yellow. And if it seems too intense even still, you can drop that opacity just a little bit. We'll do it at about 85. So that looks good. So we've got the bevel applied, color overlay. Let's go ahead and click OK. And there we have it. Now I want to zoom out of my window here, but I'm going to hold down my Option Command, that would be Alt Control, and hit my minus key, and it zooms out the window while keeping the overall frame in place because I want to be able to see the outside working area here. Now before we do anything, let's go over here on this layer. I'm going to press Command or Control T to uh, invoke the free transform. Control or right click right on that, and we're going to choose Warp. That's not right. I use Warp too much. So I, or I select it by automatically. No, no, no. We're gonna actually going to choose Skew here. And we're going to hold down the Option key, Alt on Windows. And I'm going to grab this side handle here and just push up. And it gives me that kind of a uh, cool slant there on that lettering. We've got a little bit of a gap down here, but that's no problem. We'll just take this and drag it down. And let's go ahead and scale this up as well. So it fills in the space a little bit better. There we have it. Well, now we're going to create a fake 3D look for this. Very, very cool. So what I want to do first is, of course, create a duplicate of this layer. So I'm going to press Command or Control J, and it's going to create a duplicate. We're going to select the bottom layer here. Now, with this uh, outside work area uh, visible, I'm going to bring up my rulers by pressing Command or Control R. And then when the rulers are visible, you can actually drag out guides, vertical and horizontal, from these rulers. I am going to drag out a, gu a horizontal guide to right about here on the document. Then we're going to take out a vertical guide and I'm going to put it right about here. What this is, is this, this point right here is going to be my vanishing point for when I create the 3D, 3D effect. So let's do that. With that, background, with that back layer selected, we're going to go in here and press Command or Control T to start the free transform. And you're going to want to grab your center handle on this object, which is hard to see sometimes. Let's zoom in here so we can see. It's going to be right in the middle. If you drag your mouse over it, you can see the little icon changes right there. So we're going to grab that and push it right over here to where that little crosshair is, right there. So that's, that's, this object will be scaled based on that point and where it's positioned. Let's go up into the options bar here and lock the, the proportions. And then right in here, we're going to enter 94. You can see what it's done. It scaled that duplicate back a little bit toward that center point there. Well, now let's do this. I'm going to press, I'm going to go ahead and load this layer as a selection. We're going to hold down the command key and click right on that layer because when we create a number of repeats that we're about to do, with it selected, we'll keep it all on one layer. If it was unselected, it would create a new layer for every instance we create. Very important. So now, I'm going to press. Option Command T to start the step and repeat. We're going to grab that center point once more again and then put it in that, at that crosshair right here. Then go up in your options bar, again, lock that proportion, and then highlight the number. And we're going to enter 100.1. Press Enter twice, and there it's going to have made the change. Now, I'm going to hold down Shift Option Command, that would be Shift Alt Control on Windows, and then we're going to press the letter T many, 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 many times. And what it's going to do is kind of build that 3D look as it gets back to its original position. 
So we'll just press T a few times here. And we'll just press it a few more times. And it really starts to define the 3D look there. But it's important to keep those increments very small. We did the 100.1, and that was just enough to make it look just right. So there we have a little bit of a 3D action going on. Now, can't really tell what's going on here. We've got to change something. So with that layer selected, we're going to bring up levels. I'm simply pressing Command or Control L. And down here in the output levels at the bottom, we're going to grab that white slider and push it all the way over. You'll see that text get really kind of dark, and that starts to stand out a little bit better. We can even push the color darkness there a little bit more. But now that text is really defined and has a really nice fake 3D look to it. Very, very cool. All we really need to do now is add our background element. Let's go in here and grab this leafy environment I've got here. We'll throw that in the background right here at the bottom of the layers order. Press Command and Control T and let's uh, scale that up. So it fits right in there. Just so it uh, gives it a little bit more depth of field, let's throw a quick blur on that background. Let's go into uh, Filter Blur, Gaussian Blur. About a five pixel blur looks pretty good, I think. And there we have it. The land, or rather the Band of the Lost, coming soon. Where actually Land of the Lost is actually now in theaters. So there you have it. Enjoy.